Hey, it's Dry Bear. Today, we're gonna jumpstart you with the brand new Destroyer class coming to Western Lost Ark. We will cover everything from how to play the class, some tips and tricks, and two full builds, including tripods, stat distribution, and engravings. If you're starting your journey as a destroyer, then you come to the exact right place. So let's go. But first, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Who knows? I might even be streaming right now. Let's start with the playstyle and mechanics of the class so that we're all on the same page. Destroyer is a warrior, so they're a little bit slower, one of the slowest classes in the game, but there are a lot of ways that they can counteract this. If you look at their skill book, you'll see there's two different colored abilities, the purple and the blue. And you can look at these as builders and spenders. The builders, or your concentration skills, these blue abilities, will build up your gravity cores. These are shown on the bottom middle of the screen on your identity meter, the three dots at the bottom. You can then consume these gravity cores to make your gravity release skills, the purple abilities, much better in various ways, usually with scaling damage. As you build up these gravity cores and then spend them, it will fill your passive meter, your hyper gravity meter, which you can see on the sides of your identity gauge. And once that is full, you can enter into hyper gravity mode, which looks like this. You'll activate it, it'll give you a big shield and start draining the meter. And then you have two options when you're in this mode. You can either use the vortex, which isn't really used for damage on bosses, which looks like this and is great for chaos dungeons. You'll slam it down and it'll suck some mobs in. The other option is far more common where you can start auto attacking. The longer you do this, the more damage it does and the faster it, will, the faster it goes, which overall will increase your damage output. This is like the bam bam or the bonk bonk. And one of the class engravings goes off of this hyper gravity mode to increase the damage done, which honestly is probably one of the most hilarious abilities in the game to me. I just can't help but smile or laugh when I see a destroyer just going to town on a monster or a boss just bonking them into oblivion. They're pretty durable during this, especially if you're in gravity trading engraving. Uh, so while you have this active, you do get a massive shield, and then you also have um, some immunities that prevent you from being interrupted while you're doing this, but you will still take damage. You have two awakenings to choose from. One is Big Bang, and it's probably the one that gets used the most in almost all content, mostly because it's very reliable. You can put the damage exactly where you want it, and it looks like this. You'll activate it, and as long as you hold it down, you'll start charging. You can move a little bit. And then when you release, it will release the Big Bang Explode. Not only do you have debuff immunity and super armor like you do with all Awakenings, but you also have parts destruction and stagger on this one. Um, and another reason why Destroyer is so good at stagger is they have an Awakening that will deal it. The other option is Terra Break, and it looks like this. You'll start slam the hammer, create the fissure, and then charge your hammer and slam and deal damage in an area. Now, one cool effect of the Terra Break is that it does fill your identity gauge when you use it. So it's super useful for the gravity training engraving build because you can activate it. You see my, my meter was empty. Now it's full, so I finished the ultimate um, and then can slam down and fill this up. Now, if you're playing with the Rage Hammer build, uh, you may still want to go with the Big Bang because it's more reliable as this animation is quite lengthy uh, and it does have a little bit harder uh, aim to it uh, as you kind of the build up and then the big bang has the benefits of having the parts destruction the weak point uh, and the fact that you can move while doing it which is super nice for stagger almost everything you do has stagger but the big ones are going to be uh, typically your full swing which is one of your gravity release spenders and then earth eater which is another gravity release spender these have very high stagger and you can use them for stagger and in many cases you'll see people running the overwhelm rune on full swing or earth eater uh, just to get that extra bit of stagger on it now again your other spenders your purple will still have high stagger on them uh, but you may be using those for damage more often than uh, for the stagger breaks and as with many of the other heavy classes there is an armor down synergy uh, the build that i'm going to show you today has it on jumping smash um, so you'll use this to do armor down, and this is your party synergy for your group. And lastly, before we get into the builds, let's cover the counter. There are two counters in the Destroyer kit uh, that are used regularly. Which one you choose is kind of up to you. Uh, depends on what your build is. The one that I prefer and will be in the build today is going to be Dreadnought. 
and it looks like this. So it's a little bit of a windup. We just got that donk, and both of those hits should apply the counter, uh, but it's super useful for the counter attack. You just need to be in front of the boss, uh, use that bonk bonk, and then you'll get that counter there. But the other option is power strike. Some people like using this as their counter as well. This one, it comes out a little bit quicker and plays out a little bit fa uh, longer as well. So it is kind of nice to get in front of the boss and then use the counter this way. And you'll notice that power strike also has an armor down synergy on it as well. So if you don't run the synergy that we're going to run on jumping smash, you can run Power Strike as your counter and get the armor down as an alternative option. Personally, I prefer Dreadnought. I'm just used to the timing by this point. But one of the cool things about Dreadnought as well is one of the first uh, levels of this, you can pick up not being pushed, uh, which is super nice. You can put a uh, tenacity on this, which means that, you know, if you get knocked while you're trying to do your counter, you can't be interrupted by very, you know, low level interruptions you'll still be able to get the counter off uh, very consistently, which I like. Now let's talk about the two different builds based on the class engravings that you might be running. We'll cover the tripods, the stat distribution, the engravings, and some general tips for gameplay. Now there are two class engravings for the Destroyer, Gravity Training, and Rage Hammer. Rage Hammer gives you crit rate and crit damage for every core that you consume. So all the way up to 45% crit damage and 15% crit rate. So it just makes your purple skills so much stronger and this by far is the most popular and the most reliable build for Destroyer. But the other option is Gravity Training, and this focuses on your identity. So this one will make you a lot more effective in getting to your hyper gravity state and then also spending it. And kind of like Shock Training Scrapper, it'll give you a passive regeneration 2% per second on your gravity gauge. So you can get into hyper gravity sooner. And once you're in the hyper gravity state, it gives you a 30% increased critical strike chance and bonus damage as well. So that's gonna be this meter here. When you activate this, it will just give you more crit and more damage in the Bonk Bonk. So this is the Bonk Bonk build and is probably one of the most unique builds in the game, uh, but we'll cover that in just a moment. Let's start by covering the more common and more reliable build, the Rage Hammer build, which focuses on giving you crit rate and crit damage when you consume gravity cores for your spenders. You'll see on screen recommended runes and gems, as well as tripods for the eight abilities you'll have on your bar. And it's worth noting that this is just a recommendation build to get you started. There are a lot of variations in every class depending on the content you're doing, the tripods that you need for that specific encounter. So feel free to edit this as you like, but if you're someone who's coming in without much knowledge and you just want a starter build, I think this is a great and well-balanced build for the Rage Hammer Destroyer. You'll be running with four builders and four spenders. And with the recent balance change to Destroyer in Korea, they made it a lot more fluid. They made it so that your jumping smash and your dreadnought in this build will give you two cores when you hit with them which is much better than the one, sometimes two that you used to get. And then you'll use Heavy Crush as your short cooldown uh, one core builder. So all you have to do is use either Jumping Smash or Dreadnought and then finish with a Heavy Crush or vice versa. And then that'll give you three cores that you can spend on one of your four purple abilities. Endure Pain now also taunts, which is amazing. You can use it to interrupt boss patterns, but it also will give you a full three cores when it hits the target. But the most important is going to be how you use your four spenders. Starting with the creme de la creme of Destroyer, Perfect Swing. This one has a good wind up on it. Note that I do have supercharged level three here, uh, but when you activate it, you'll wind up. If there's nothing in your way, you'll move forward and swing and deal damage. If there is something blocking your path, you will have to, uh, you'll just run right into them and swing. It looks like this. You'll hear that tink sound. There's actually a unique destroyer mechanic that if you uh, hit them at the right distance, and the reason why I'm standing here like this, uh, is if you hit them at the very edge of the swing, uh, you'll get an extra little reward for it, um, which is super nice. But this is going to be your big spender um, that gets you all the way stacked up, gets you a bunch of damage, and it does have front attack and back attack on it. So you'll see the front and back on it and it does have high stagger and weak point. You can see even with supercharged level three, it does take a little bit to wind up and then you'll uh, hit them with that. Next is gonna be full swing. Uh, it looks like this, you'll wind up. This one actually, you can change directions pretty easily. You'll do a whirlwind motion and then do a final swing at the very end of it as you move forward. Now what's cool about this is gonna be the tripod that we have in this build. For full swing is gonna be the terrifying hammer here. Every time you hit with the initial swing, the last swing increases in damage. Uh, so what you can do with this is, let's get some gravity cores here. 
is you can actually hit them multiple times with the swing up and then the final hit will do more damage on top of that so you do want to not necessarily just use this for movement you want to see if you can hit all of the hits on a target uh, and then spend it but since you can move with this ability it's actually pretty convenient to be able to use it to stack up your hits as you go along and then make sure that the last hit is a head attack because you'll scale off the head attacks what you can do on bosses is go along them laterally stack up the hits and then you'll get the head attack there on the last hit uh, if you can position yourself well which you'll find is a theme with the destroyer is that you're always trying to make sure that you position yourself just right to get the most out of your spenders. The next spender is Earth Eater and is one of my favorites. You'll wind up, slam into the ground, and then you'll, after a short delay, um, when you fully wind up, you'll actually slam down to the ground and create two uh, ground here. You'll see this target, the smaller indent and then the larger indent uh, further away. And what's useful about this ability is it has a very wide range to it. And as we discussed earlier, it does have high stagger and parts destruction or weak point, which is super great. And you do want to try and hit it in the second crater, the second indent, because it will give you more damage and a higher stagger. So you get at just the right distance, charge it up. And then if you hit them within the second one, you'll get a double hit there. Uh, and you also get higher stagger out of that. So just make sure you're positioning yourself at the right distance. And lastly, your last spender in this build is Seismic Hammer, which looks like this. Dunk your hammer down, a shockwave will come out, and then you'll hit them with this little ring on the outside, which is great at all distances. This one actually does have back attack and front attack on it. Um, the front attack and back attack modifiers are different. Back attack gives you crit and damage, and then head attack gives you a lot more damage than back attack, uh, plus extra stagger. So it's super nice to be able to use those two together. A couple notes on this seismic hammer here. The, do the thing you want to pay the most attention to is going to be the wall with the tripod that we're running right now as that is going to be your most effective uh, hit zone on top of that. So you want to make sure that you're hitting there with the wall. Uh, but there's a couple things you can note about this. One is that it does have a delayed activation. So you can actually use this as uh, the boss is moving. It's one of your, uh, you know, high stagger abilities as well. But what's cool about this one is when you land down, the ability has fired as soon as you land onto the ground. So as soon as that hammer hits the ground, and you see the shockwave going. The ability is considered fired so what you can do is you can land down with the size of a camera and immediately cancel with a dash and the ability will still go off so you can use this to get extra stagger on top of targets you move away get the extra damage on there or you can even just you know dunk and then start charging the next one uh if you have an ability on top of that so you can land dodge charge up a full swing or a perfect swing and go straight into that to get the head attack on top of them as well now with the rage hammer build i recommend going a primary of crit uh, so about 55% or 56% crit, depending on how many stats you have available. And then split the rest of your stats between specialization and swiftness. Specialization is great. It'll give you a little bit more damage uh, from your gravity cores and your gravity core spending. And then, of course, swiftness is great because it allows you to get you know shorter animation time, a little bit faster movement speed, and shorter cooldowns. And with this build, I recommend running Rage Hammer, the class engraving, and then follow up with Master Brawler for head attack scaling. Supercharge is a must because you have so many charge up abilities in this kit, and you're also rather slow, so it's very nice. The extra damage is nice. You can run Grudge for the extra percent damage, one of the most efficient uh, engravings in the entire game for damage. Barricade, because anytime you use a spender, you will get a shield on you. As long as you're using the spender with three cores, you'll get the shield on top of you, which means that anytime you're using a spender, you're going to be getting uh, the scaling damage from Barricade. And remember that when you go into hypergravity, this will give you a shield as well. So Barricade is basically always on when you need it. So it's an excellent engraving to pick up. And another great engraving is Cursed Doll, just because you have such singular discrete hits. Scaling attack power is very useful. It'll make those hits even bigger. Now let's talk about the Bonk Bonk build. This build is very unique in how it plays and how it compares to the other builds in the game. So let's talk about what makes it different and why. Now, because this build focuses on your hyper gravity mode, the differences are not gonna be in the abilities. You can run the exact same build we talked about for Rage Hammer, but your stats are gonna be very different, and so will your engravings. So again, you'll see the image linked down below in the description, and then you'll have it linked on screen. Uh, you can find that and use it. It's the exact same build. There'll be some differences. You may want to get five of the builders and then three spenders. 
but it plays the same outside of hypergravity mode. Now you have two options for stat distribution on this one. The first one is going to be the highest risk, but I think is one of the most hilarious Giga Chad builds in the entire game, and that's going to be 75% specialization and 25% crit. And you're just going all in on the bam bam with this stat distribution. And you'll start seeing some ridiculous numbers with your hypergravity. If you run this build, just know that it is a little bit riskier. But if you want to play it on the safer side, you can run with a 55% endurance and 55, uh, 45% swiftness or 50-50 endurance on, and swiftness here. And the big thing is that you're just wanting to get damage reduction, uh, shielding effect, healing, um, and then a little bit of swiftness for movement speed because you're going to be trying to maximize the amount of time that you spend in front of the boss, bonking them in the face as hard as you possibly can. And the big thing here is that the longer you do this, the faster you go, the more damage you'll deal. Uh, so you're trying to just make sure that you can stay on the boss for as long as possible. Now with this build, you often see people running the Terra break just so you can fill meter and get right back into your hypergravity mode. So you'll activate this, you'll get your meter, and then you can activate and you'll start spending this. Uh, you'll just start bonking, getting the front attack on the auto attacks here. You don't often use the gravity well, but you'll just want to sit on top of the, the target bonking as hard as you can. For engravings here on this one, you will have to endure some punishment to make this build work. So oftentimes you'll see people running gravity training, which of course gives you the extra uh, regeneration for your meter plus extra crit and damage when you're in hypergravity mode, but then a bunch of defensive engravings to make sure that you can stay on top of the boss or the target for as long as humanly possible. Things like strong will, which will reduce the damage taken when you are pushed. Things like fortitude, which reduces the damage you receive based on how big the hit was. Reinforced shield, which will make you immune to all abnormal statuses while you have the shield up, but it reduces the effectiveness of the shield. So again, because you when you activate your, your passive here, you do get a shield initially, and then you can use this to get the enhanced shield effect, which means that you can't really be interrupted while you're doing this. And it's I've seen destroyers that run this build that will just go up to Vaulton while he's trying to knock everyone off or doing a big ultimate, and they're just sitting there ignoring everyone in the, in the area and just bonking him endlessly, which I think is just absolutely hilarious. And you can run Spirit Absorption for extra animation speed, attack speed on your abilities, and movement speed to kind of move around and get into the right position to use your hypergravity mode. Now, these defensive engravings are useful for the gravity training build for very difficult content, but if you find that you are either overgearing or not needing it, you can start working in some damage engravings to make the bonk bonk even stronger. Just note that starting with Legion commanders on Vaulton and going forward, uh, you will be punished heavily for standing still uh, as any class, uh, but destroyer as well. So if you're going on bonk bonk town, uh, you're going to get punished for it. So you, you, these engravings that are very defensive are trying to take that into account so that you can stand still as long as possible without getting interrupted or cut or killed. And that does it for the two builds that you can use for your destroyer. Now let's talk a little bit about some alternate abilities, things that you can use. Uh, that are very common and very effective. In some cases, if you find that you're you're having trouble spending all four of your spenders, you can actually play a five builder, three spender build, and many people do this. Uh, in this case, they will remove usually Earth Eater uh, out of the build, and then we'll work in uh, alternate uh, builder options like Power Shoulder. Uh, power Shoulder is super cool. This one just gives you a little bit for forward dash there, which is very useful. Uh, does good damage, um, and it's very common as well. We already talked about Power Strike as an alternate for your counter if you did not like using Dreadnought here. Uh, so Power Strike can give me an option for synergy and an option for countering if you'd like. Especially if you're running with the gravity training build, you can also work in running crash, uh, which gives you just, again, it's a way to just get some distance. It's kind of like the gun lancer charge, uh, but you can at least get some good distance out of this to reposition. Or what some people will do is they'll use it to get the bonk bonk, and then when they're out of energy and they exit the bonk bonk, then they can jump out and get out of dodge very quickly so that they're not in danger of being hit by a mechanic of some kind. And in some cases, especially in Chaos Dungeons, you can also run with Gravity Impact, which looks like this. You'll slam, you'll suck them in, and you'll hit them. And the reason why it's super good is you can actually get some good tripods on this one 
uh, but it's useful for pulling in mobs, especially in Chaos Dungeons. Now we'll close out the video with just some better basic tips and tricks and things that I've learned when playing Destroyer so you can just jump into the game and start having fun right away. The first thing is going to be the fact that Endure Pain does give you a taunt now, so be sure to use this to interrupt animations. This is the same strategy that Gunlancer have always had, but we've recently gotten the Endure Pain taunt for Destroyer, and we'll have it for the release as well, which you can use this to fill up your meter, but also to turn bosses, uh, turn mobs away, and remember that when you activate Endure Pain, you can't be pushed uh, as well, and it also does give you damage reduction. So as you, when you activate this, as you take damage right away, it'll allow you to stay on target. So you can activate this to go straight into a charge, uh, which can give you some really nice damage up front, or you can just use it to uh, prevent a push from happening or a knockback. Endure Pain is also great because you can get it to give you three gravity cores. So in this case where I have uh, three gravity cores already, I can activate maybe something like full swing. I can move forward, get the hit on there, gravity hit, and then go straight into a perfect swing uh, in order to get that perfect positioning and get the damage up front. But again, the big thing about playing Destroyer is more about positioning yourself in the right place at the right time uh, in order to get maximum effectiveness out of your abilities. And in many cases can require a lot of preemptive planning or thought to make sure that you're uh, predicting where the boss is gonna be so you can land that right away. If you hit a stagger check, just remember that a lot of your longer abilities have high stagger, but it also can mean that uh, you will have to spend them in rapid succession. So you have to dump them right away in order to get the extra damage or the extra stagger off to, to pass the stagger check. Or maybe you can use this as well to try and get the bonk on them uh, and, and pass that check for your group. And while it is a little risky, you do remember that your dash can serve as an animation cancel for many of the long windups. We already talked about Seismic Hammer where you can land and then dash to get the effect out and start moving right away. But you can also use it for things like Earth Eater where you can just wait, let that slam and then dash to avoid the follow up. Um, it does put your dash on cooldown, but just keep in mind that is an option. And that's kind of like the advanced strategy for playing Destroyer is you can actually uh, use the animation cancel on your dash to keep yourself moving and keep yourself in the fight. And that's basically it for Destroyer. I hope these builds were helpful. I hope this has been a very helpful guide for you. And I hope you're excited for playing Destroyer. This class is very unique. One of the more unique ones in the game. It plays unlike anything else. Um, and it's a super fun class to play and a pleasure to have in groups, especially now that they have a taunt, which makes them just very valuable. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content, link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.